Okay, good evening. I'd like to call this uh, 2000, excuse me, February 19th, 2020 meeting of the Scarborough Town Council to order. Uh, the first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three is roll call. Councilor Clucci? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Gleistein? Here. Councilor Caterina? Here. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Pamel? Here. Chairman Johnson? Here. Item number four is general public comment. <coughs> comment from the public <coughs> for items not on the agenda. My name is Mike Doyle. I own and write for FalmouthToday.me. I'm currently involved in a federal lawsuit against the town of Scarborough and various people on the previous council. Because of that, I can file interrogatories against people in the town of Falmouth. And these are interrogatories I'm going to read tonight for Chief Moulton. These aren't all the interrogatories, just some of them. Were you married to wife number one when you were working in the Scarborough High School and began dating an underage high school senior who subsequently became wife number two and you were caught having sex with her on Cape Elizabeth? Did you show, your cape, did you show that Cape officer your badge to get out of further questioning that kept her underage status secret? When Officer Gway got the CI pregnant killing a major Class A felony drug distribution case, what was the justification of promoting him to acting sergeant and taking him to an award ceremony, email dated May 31st, 2012, for a drug enforcement agency's luncheon? How long in weeks and months did you drive the seized BMW as your personal vehicle while driving it out of state with an expired inspection sticker, email dated June 12th, 2013, read Gary Morong? Have you ever had sexual contact with any Scarborough employee or with any employee's wife or ex-wife? If so, who were they? How many auditing meetings did you conduct in your office at the police station with the lights off with a female member of the town's finance department? Was it Laurie Bidor? Describe your relationship with Megan Sargent to include when you started having sex with her as a police explorer, how she was your date at a funeral where she didn't know anyone there, including the deceased, and what grounds caused you to fire her May of 2012. Explain how you helped Mr. Gordon, telephone number 207-332-1599, get his case dismissed, and describe the nature of the case that was dismissed. Email from Chandler to Moulton, March 2nd, 2011. I'm limited to 20 questions, but I'm not going to read all of them to you, but there's several more that are on this list that have been filed with uh, Mark Frankel, the lawyer. I'm limited to 30 questions total in the uh, examination for pretrial discussion. I will be filing 10 more questions similar to this with other, people's, other people in the town government. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public for items that are not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, item number five is approval of the February 5th, 2020 regular town council me uh, <coughs> minute meetings, minutes for the meeting, excuse me. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Item number six, adjustments to the agenda. There are no adjustments to the agenda. Item number seven is treasurer warrants. I have signed the treasurer warrants before the meeting tonight. Uh, order number 20017 is a 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to chapter 607, the Town of Scarborough Alarm Systems Ordinance to repeal chapter 607A, the Town of Scarborough Fire Suppression and Detection Ordinance. And this is a public hearing only. So with that, are there any members of the public that would like to speak to this? None? 
Okay, moving on. Order number 2018, a 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments for Chapter 303, the Scarborough Personnel Ordinance. And this is a public hearing only. Are there any members of the public that want to speak to this? Okay, order number 2021, a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a special amusement permit from Alex Markasik, DBA Cowbell, excuse me, Cowbell Hospitality 2, LLC, located at 185 U.S. Route 1. And this is brought to us actually first as a public hearing. So, is there anybody in the public that wants to speak to this? None? Town Clerk, do you want to tee it up for us before? Uh, this was brought to the office back in the, on the 14th of February. Uh, we did send letters out to all the abutters. We did not hear back from anyone. Um, he was specific as to the time and day the activity would take place. He did, and he's not asking for an exemption of the Good Neighbor Ordinance, but he did put in um, what they were planning on doing, like trivia or karaoke, and uh, Friday, Saturday night, ending by uh, 10 p.m. So um, I found that it was in compliance and would recommend approval. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. And any discussion? I did, just to add to it, I did check with uh, the police department and there were no outstanding issues or any complaints even from the uh, previous uh, owner. There, was not, there were no complaints. Councilor Clucci? Yeah, I, my understanding, I think this is the third location for this uh, restaurant and it's been very successful, I believe, in, in Biddeford and Lewiston, so happy to welcome to town. Thanks for investing in Scarborough. Any others? No. Town Council trivia team? Yeah? No? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> When's your scheduled opening date? Uh, March 1st. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right, with that, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, moving on. Order number, gentlemen, you guys can leave if that's all you're here for. We, you are dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the luck. <laughs> okay, order number 20007, second reading on the authorization of a credit enhancement agreement for WEX and the authorization of and delegation to the town manager to execute such agreement in the substantially, in substantially the form as presented to the town council. And are there any members of the public that would like to speak to this order? Good evening, Art Dillon, uh, Black Point Road here in Scarborough. Uh, I'm here representing myself and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which I did a couple weeks ago, and want to thank you all for considering this and again state that our Board of Directors was in favor of this uh, CEA. So thank you again. What you have. Thank you. Any others? None. We do have one that was requested to be uh, read into the public record, and I'm going to toss it over to Councillor Hamill since he has it pulled up in front of him. Uh, this was an email that was uh, uh, sent to uh, Chairman Johnson uh, on February 15th, uh, a statement from Ben Devine, who is uh, head of Center Street LLC, the developer uh, for the pending uh, WEX uh, building. Council Chair Johnson, at the request of Councilor Peter Hayes, I met Friday morning with Councilor Hayes, Councilor Betsy Gleistein, and Councilor Ken Johnson for an informal discussion regarding the proposed credit enhancement agreement, CEA for WEX. The discussion covered development aspects of the Downs, the existing CEA in place for the Downs, the background of the RFP, and WEX requirement for a CEA and the involvement of the town and Center Street LLC, the developer, in pursuit of a CEA as a requirement for WEX to locate a new 200,000 square foot office building at the Downs in Scarborough. A substantial portion of the Friday meeting centered on the outcome of the December 20th, 2019 meeting with WEX, whereby representatives of the town, I might add those representatives were uh, Chairman Johnson and myself, and, uh, and uh, Town Manager Hall, 
and the developer addressed the 300,000 square foot plus credit, 300,000 plus credit enhancement agreement uh, mandated by WEX from the town. Developer understood from town officials present at that meeting that there was no support from the town for more than $150,000 toward the CEA. The developer subsequently agreed to fund all necessary CEA money in excess of $150,000 to meet the mandate set by WEX. Councillor Hayes has requested that developer provide to the town the funding vehicle and structure the developer plans to use to satisfy its commitment to the CEA. Developer contribution to the CEA is an absolute requirement to our deal with WEX. Developer is still in lease negotiations and pre-development construction cost segregation with WEX, and hence developer is unable to identify the exact funding mechanism of our CEA contribution. Developer will satisfy its financial contribution to the CEA through a combination of annual direct payments back to WEX, lease improvements, and or rent adjustments which financially benefit WEX. Please rest assured that our commitment to our obligation is unequivocal and steadfast. We appreciate the dedication and good work of this council. Ben Devine, Center Street, LLC. Thank you. And one more chance from the public. None? Okay, with that, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. And discussion. Councilor Clucci? I'd like to start with a follow-up. We had a uh, community roundtable uh, last week, and there was a good question asked about what uh, will WEX do or how will they coordinate with our school department to try to create some sort of pipeline of uh, staff. And it happens that our uh, chair of the Board of Education is a WEX employee, so I passed that question on to her, and she gave me a response that I'd like to just read in. Uh, the, First point was that education is the engine of economic growth. With a particular focus on STEM, WEX supports educational initiatives and organizations that will help Maine to build a strong pipeline of talent. Second point is through our many nonprofit partners, we offer funding for educational enrichment in the STEM space as well as programming such as Codex, where middle schoolers are invited to WEX to learn the basics of coding. This program is offered in partnership with the Boys and Girls Clubs of, clubs of Southern Maine. And then the third point is we support statewide organizations such as Junior Achievement and Educate Maine, which work directly with local schools to offer quality programs for all Maine students, including those in Scarborough. And I just, I, I guess I'll reiterate the point that um, it just happens that our chair of the Board of Education is a WEX employee, so I think there's a pretty strong connection there already. Um, and that's, I, I have some personal comments as well, but sure. I'd like to cover the, yep. that first. Anybody want to add personal comments first? Somebody's going to start, or I'll just call the vote. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind going first. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it's been a long, it's been a long month, and uh, it was intentional, uh, primarily by the council chair, uh, to spread this out over enough time to give the public uh, an opportunity to digest uh, what we've had the opportunity to digest. So I wanted to commend the chair for holding steadfast to that, and... Uh, not that it was easy. We've had a lot of, I think, good engagement both for and against. Um, but I, I think we were only required to have a public hearing and a vote, which could have happened a month ago. Um, instead, we wanted to uh, give everybody a chance to, to let us know what you think. So I think that was commendable. Uh, I think, uh, for me, uh, WEX is going to be a, a, a great addition to the town. And uh, I tend to base my decisions on numbers. And that, uh, I'm making that. Uh, so I support uh, this, if, if you weren't clear already. Uh, it, to me, it's going to have a positive impact on our taxpayers, on our residential taxpayers. And there's, uh, it's, it's something that's kind of difficult. It, it is a tax incentive, but we are surrounded by tax incentives. That's kind of the American way. Uh, and there's been some talk of the tax incentive that we're giving to WEX, but there's been a lot less talk of the tax incentive that we get from the state hmm. to pursue economic activity like this. And I, it's complicated, so it's hard to kind of express in a few words, but the, uh, after you account, so if we were gonna put this WEX building outside of a TIF district, so let's say we're gonna put it up down Black Point Road somewhere. Right off the bat, 
there's a, a 60 percent penalty that we would get. So let's say we'd, we'd collect 700,000 in taxes, while 400 and some odd thousand of that would go, uh, we would lose in the form of reduced funding from the state for education. So there's a direct correlation to how much we pay uh, for uh, our schools, both through our property taxes and what's funded by the state. There's a direct relationship between the value that's added to the town. When you put something like that in a TIF district, that's sheltered. So it's not going to increase our um, uh, or decrease our funding from the state. Uh, so that I, this is something I'm trying to create some more education around in that uh, we have, I think, a huge incentive from the state to target our growth into TIF districts and, and then to also maximize how much of that growth we capture um, with spending that aligns with state programs. So um, I, I kind of probably more long-winded than I wanted to be there, but I, long story short, I, I support this. I'm very happy Wex has uh, selected Scarborough for their headquarters. Councilor Katarina? Um, yeah, I'm sure people will not be surprised to hear that I am voting in support of this uh, CEA for WEX. Um, I think it makes sense uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, I frankly am not one who believes in corporate welfare per se. However, when we've got a return on the investment that we're making, then it's crazy not to do what we're planning to do here. Uh, and just very briefly, um, one, I think WEX's presence in the Crossroads development will act as an anchor that will spur further development, um, which will lead to more taxable properties uh, being built. Uh, even with the underlying CEA to the developer, we're still going to see a net gain uh, and taxable value and in taxes into our coffers here in town. Um, Crossroads Holdings will be able to build out um, on, on target. Um, and if you look at their CEA without going into all the details of it, there are different targets within it. And the sooner we can get them to meet their targets, the better off for the town, uh, as well as uh, for the developer um, doing everything they say they're going to do, which includes completing the uh, road, sewer, water, uh, and utilities in that area, which is huge. That's a huge investment. And unlike Hargis Parkway, where the town became the developer, which I thought was nuts at the time, and obviously didn't work real well, um, I prefer to see the developer taking on this um, um, and, and doing this work, and I'm willing to reinvest and give back to have the work done because then it will be done, it will be done correctly, and again, it will spur more taxable properties uh, in that area. It is a growth area after all. Um, <clears throat> when you create more taxable value uh, in the commercial sector, um, it's going to shift the tax burden from the residents onto the commercial base. Um, we'd like to see a, a healthier mix there. I know I've been on this council since 2013, and one of my goals year after year after year is to increase tax stability. And there's no better way to increase tax stability than to do what we're doing in, in the uh, Scarborough Downs. And WEX will serve, as I said, as an anchor uh, to that and that further development. Uh, and I was just looking back at the numbers, and one factor that stuck out with me, and you can find this, anyone who's watching, you can find this on the planning page. There's all sorts of different um, uh, things posted there that will outline this for you if you're interested. But if we don't give WEX a CEA, and they still came, because I've heard that, well, they'll still come, they'll still come. Um, the bottom line is we would have $170 million dollars in taxes, but if we give them the CEA, we'll get $194 million in taxes. So think that one through, okay? Um, and then as John mentioned, uh, we'll be have sheltered, sheltering value from the state for purposes of county taxes, municipal revenue sharing, and school funding, which means that we will get more back of our hard-earned state income tax money. I don't know about you guys, but I pay a good piece to the state, and I'd like to see it come back to Scarborough. So uh, I feel that this is a win-win 
uh, for us as a town and in particular for the residential taxpayers. Uh, otherwise, I would not support it, but I do support it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Um, can I just ask a clarifying question? I thought, I thought we are at minimum receivership, so as far as sheltering, WEX sheltering us from a reduction in school funding, um, that's not applicable, at least at this point in time. Is that an accurate statement? Oh, well, well, you qualified it. At this point in time, we are a minimum receiver. Right. We are barely a minimum receiver. And right. if you trend our enrollment yeah. Yeah. compared to the state with our valuation growth, if we shelter it compared to the state, then we should move out of minimum receivership in the course of the TIF district. So that's when I made my comments that there's a, a shelter benefit. Right. It's, it's down the road. It's not today. But okay. it's down the road. Just clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's part of the, yeah, it's the long-term <coughs> agreement. To add a further uh, clarity to that, uh, there is shelter benefit, but it's much smaller. It's in the order of 5% right, rather on the, than 50%, on the county, yeah. roughly speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Any others? I had a clarifying question to Mrs. Hamill. I'm speaking into the microphone tonight. Hopefully that <laughs> will satisfy her. I'm trying. Um, so uh, so the $194 million that... Um, that uh, G. Marie referenced, based on my numbers, uh, when we were looking at the numbers, there was a comparison between WEX not coming and WEX coming. Um, so I, I understood her to say WEX coming or WEX coming. I, so I'm not quite sure what that, that meant. But we never looked at, to the best of my knowledge, what would come instead of WEX, in case WEX didn't come. Because there was an argument WEX will come without the money. But we only looked at, okay, nothing else gets built there versus what if WEX comes. Is that accurate or is that people's, was that your understanding of what the data we were looking at, Jean Marie? Because I think you're citing Could that I data. Could um, through the chair? Could yes. get Karen yeah. Martin to talk about that? I'm sorry, Karen. <laughs> So I believe the analysis that Jim Marie was referring to was um, the current um, assessment of the downs as they originally proposed it, and then we added in the 200,000 square feet. That's what the difference is between those the two figures. And Jim Marie, you, that's where you got the, the two uh, figures yeah, right from. Yeah, I'm looking for it. I didn't print it. <laughs> I think out. it's I'm from the, the chart that we were doing. Yeah, it was one of the charts. Right. That you so got we posted. looked. Yeah, we we looked at the WEX analysis uh, with and without uh, in terms of the downs. And just because I, I do think Betsy is raising a good point here. To further clarify that, the without WEX, that would be the downs in totality, Correct. which of course would include those 15 acres that we're talking about. It, would be exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. All right. um, it just, you know, I think when we did the original analysis, the different lots were not assigned specific values. We yep. analyzed it as a whole. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Karen Martin, I'm with the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. Any others? Councillor Hayes? Yeah, I guess I'll go. And it'll probably be no surprise. I, I guess, you know, I'll start off. I'll probably be a little more long-winded than I usually am. First and foremost, I mean, I think it's exciting that, that WEX is coming. I, I'm going to put that out there. I think it's for all the reasons that have been articulated from all the emails that we have gotten. I'm excited that WEX is coming. I think they're a great addition to our community. I think they'll be great for our community. However, I'm not going to support the CEA tonight. It has nothing to do with WEX. It has nothing to do with them coming to our town. It really has to do more with just sort of where I thought we were going with it, sort of my understanding of what CEAs were for. Um, I had really thought when we had the, the big CEA to the Scarborough Downs development team that was going to be an 80 plus million dollar expenditure for taxpayers in Scarborough, that that really was paving the way for what we're seeing today. That was as was referenced earlier, that was to pay for all the infrastructure costs, that was to pay for the sewers and the roads and to jumpstart the development. I had thought when we had done the original economic modeling of how our taxpayers gonna come out ahead on the $80 million that we're gonna be paying out, that it really, as other councilors have said, it depends on getting 
the tax value from the commercial properties. When we did the original modeling, we never modeled putting CEAs for the commercial folks that were coming. We're relying on that income to make the numbers work. So for me, I always had thought that we had seeded the pot, if you will. We'd put money into the pot to accelerate the Scarborough Downs development and really turn the money over to the developers to say, do what you need to do to, to get the tenants that you need. So I always thought that that money was, that, that the tenants that came, it was going to be a negotiation and an arrangement between the developers and the tenants that came into Scarborough Downs that was gonna drive us forward. Um, I never thought that we'd be kind of in the middle of it. I mean, overnight with WEX coming, that's worth about $4 million to the development team. So there is significant advantage to having WEX come to the developers, <coughs> to the town, for all of us. I do have a problem with us picking winners and losers, that, that WEX is the first to come to the Downs. What's going to happen when we have the next marquee name come? What if L.L. Bean wants to come? We, we've talked about hotels. We've talked about grocery stores. How are we going to pick going forward who gets a CEA, who doesn't? And again, I, we're picking winners and losers. If you just look at recent history, we've had some people in town that have driven businesses here that are great. You look at Nonsuch Brewery. I know those folks that put that in place took significant leverage to be able to build that business. They took a ton of risk to come here. O'Reilly's did the same thing. Foley's, I mean, if you look at the investment that's been made in, in, in Mike Foley's facility, we didn't help them. So I, I'm struggling with how do we play fair going forward. So I really think this really should be a conversation between tenants and, and just as we have struggled, what's our role as a town in all of this? So I, I struggle a little bit with that. Giving money, additional tax CEA monies to businesses that come almost feels like a double dipping, in, in my humble opinion. I thought the money that we planted was seed money to make this happen. Now we're kind of being asked to come back to the table and, and take another bite at the apple and, and invest. So that's, that's one major issue for me. It's just philosophic. Um, I'm glad WEX is coming too. I'm a little uncomfortable with the financial modeling. I, I think we do have, again, I, I used to do this work in financial modeling for a supermarket chain. We always sort of looked at, and it's the same way we do when we estimate the, the tax rate in town here. We kind of look, what's the best case scenario? what's sort of a middle of the road scenario and what's the worst case scenario. What we're trying to project here are economic conditions, growth, changes for 15 to 30 years out. That accuracy of that modeling is, is iffy at best and, and most people will tell you that. So what I'm concerned about, there are some critical assumptions that aren't in these numbers. Everybody has said, gee, taxpayers, if everything goes in the model, will be $3 million to the good. Well, there's, there's a couple of key things that are left out of that estimate. One is there's no impact included in there for, for school. And if there's going to be 1,200 people that are coming to WEX and there's 600 employees in WEX today, those are additional people that will be coming and would likely like to locate close to work in our community. Actually, I've heard people talking about they'd love to be able to work to walk to WEX. That's great. But the chances are we're going to have additional children that come, students will come. If there are just 10 students that additionally that we get because of that, it makes us upside down. We start to lose money. You've heard in public comment that all traffic improvements are going to be paid for. In reality, what's going to be paid for is what the Department of Transportation deems as being degradation of intersections. And they only, if they degrade from A to B or A to C, there is no, there, and that, that's a safety rating. There is no additional funds required. The only funds required to make traffic changes is if the intersections become unsafe and then they only have to pay to get them back to the C grade, as I understand it. So there's, there's traffic numbers that aren't in here. There's possibly other things that aren't in here. So it just makes me nervous at this point. Doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. Just means I think this is really an arrangement that should be between the developers and WEX to have WEX come to town. Um, the third thing that, that at least as I look at it, we've had a lot of, I mean, our emails have been flooded with people for and against and all sorts of viewpoints and they've been interesting to read. People have great points. Um, we've had a lot of sort of public comment and emails from 
SEDCO board members and Chamber of Commerce board, board members, which, which are important, um, employees of WEX, other vested stakeholders in the community. So again, those are folks that, you know, I, I would expect the business community would be really excited, at least in my circles that I talk to when I talk to people. And in some of the emails, when you talk to you know, our constituents, our folks that will be the taxpayers, the 70% the of taxes that come from the residential property owners, my, my circle, people are excited about WEX. They're not excited about the CEA. They really don't think that we should be doing that. So I, I kind of listen to those voices. You know, and I, and I take a look at this community, you know, less than four months ago, five months ago, refused to, at the polls, turn down funding a new turf field, which had potentially some safety issues. You know, I think the attitude of, of the community is they're excited about WEX coming, but they, they really are concerned about does that come on the back of taxpayers. So I, I'm listening to those voices. Um, you know, and then the fourth thing for me that, that I'm looking at, which, which was part of what was read into comments, part of the discussion was that this was going to be, in order to get WEX to come, there needs to be $300,000. It was going to be a town responsibility of $150,000 and a developer responsibility of $150,000. As of this point in time, there is not a clear line of sight. We're actually going to physically cut a check every year. As soon as we collect the tax dollars, we're going to cut a check back to WEX. It is unclear to me in the documents that we have and even what was read into the document tonight, what's going to be the line of sight. So all of us, and certainly I'm not going to be here in 15 years, I may not even be above ground in 15 years. How are all of us going to remember what the commitment was and how are we going to be able to get that line of sight? I think we have a fiduciary responsibility to be able to say to taxpayers, we see the line of sight of how our money is going to flow into the agreed upon arrangement and how the developed money is going to flow. And with that, those are all the reasons why I'm uncomfortable at this point in time. I would have preferred to kind of table this until we actually have the lease finalized and other things. But, and the last thing I will say, a suggestion going forward, this deal was pretty complex. The Scarborough Downs deal was pretty complex. I am certain we're going to have a whole host of new requests for CEAs. I'd like to suggest, and I've actually talked to, to some of my peers, I think we really need to think about, we need to hire a professional consultant to help us negotiate these things, know how to look at the analysis about what the numbers mean. It, it's, it's we are negotiating with folks that do this as their full-time job. None of us are doing this, or most of us, there's some, you know, I think, I think Councilor Katarina is, is in real estate, but some of us aren't. So that's sort of a long-winded way to say, no, I won't be supporting this tonight. Any more? Okay. Yeah. Um, to start, I'd like to say um, that I respect and appreciate the opinions of everyone who's weighed in on this debate, and I respect the opinions of my um, fellow town councilors, even those who will likely vote differently than I will vote this evening. Um, while many in town um, disagree on this issue, the dialogue has been extremely respectful, and I do not use that word lightly. It's extremely. That's not an overstatement, and I think this speaks very, very highly of our town. Um, I've received many questions about how this deal came about, and after, um, especially after everything went public. And based on the timeline um, that's been given uh, by a few different meetings um, that I'd like to thank the chairman for, um, some residents were left th with the impression that every councilor has long been aware of the WEX request. I won't speak for anyone else on the council, but I wanted to set the record straight um, for me personally. I first heard about the WEX CEA um, in early December at the first executive session. Um, after all the executive sessions were complete, I learned on January 12th um, from an email from Councillor Clucci um, that to the best of my understanding at this point in time, Scarborough's involvement um, beyond conversations began when SEDCO um, and the town manager provided a letter in support of an RFP presented to WEX representatives. Um, and they, they did this letter uh, joint with the Center Street LLC, which is a joint venture between um, the owners of the Downs and Divine Capital. Um, the letter in part read, um, 
The town became a financial partner with the Crossroads LLC through a credit enhancement agreement authorized under a newly formed downtown TIF tax increment financing. The CEA will reimburse Crossroads for major infrastructure investments and will provide incentives for a balanced mixed-use development. With performance measures in place, the CEA may reimburse as much as $81 million over a 30-year period. The approved downtown TIF specifically allows for additional CEAs to be negotiated and approved by the council. Having an existing TIF district approved by the state in place makes it possible to efficiently evaluate any proposals put forth by WEX. Having such a district established is an essential prerequisite to entering into a CEA. The Scarborough Economic Development Corporation, a nonprofit set up by the town to facilitate economic development, will be the starting point to any request and will work with the company throughout the process. So there was more to this letter. I'm sure it's public. It was dated June 25th, 2019. I became aware of that on um, January 12th, and it led greatly to my understanding of how this has all, all come about. Um, so that's the timeline, along with what Councillor um, uh, Johnson, Chairman Johnson, has so ably gone through a number of times. But I just wanted to set the record straight that I haven't known about this since June or September or November or even barely December, and then not the full story until kind of some of the public meetings and workshops. Um, regarding the deal in front of us, um, we've heard from many uh, business professionals and WEX employees what a great company WEX is, and I am convinced, um, based on everything we've heard, that they are a great company. Um, I readily and happily welcome WEX um, uh, to the town, and they'll be a great addition. Um, with what we've already committed to. We wouldn't be here tonight talking about WEX um, if they weren't asking for a credit enhancement. I think that's one thing that's been a little bit confusing in the public record is people saying, well, you're against WEX. Well, I'm definitely not against WEX. I'm for WEX and for WEX coming. They're, they seem to be a great company. We would have no conversation at all um, had we not been requested to provide an additional um, tax rebate. This would not have come in front of the council. So I just want to make that clear. Um, but many people um, contacting me and myself were struggling to understand the need for this, especially given the success of the company. One of the developers that WEX is working with said in a public statement, the additional rebate is needed because WEX needs to feel the love from Scarborough. Is this an accurate statement? Is this about an emotion? WEX is a proud main company. But as a Maine company, they are no doubt aware of the burden that ordinary Mainers carry in taxes, especially property taxes. The same night we heard about great reasons for WEX coming to Scarborough, we heard from Project Grace, who told us about the Scarborough elderly couple who recently celebrated because they could turn their heat up to 58 degrees. Despite what people think of Scarborough, we have an economically diverse communi community and many struggle to pay bills for their home. So that is a personal reason. Jean Marie mentioned she was not for quote unquote corporate welfare. I think um, I would have to join her in that and that's a personal reason I'm not in favor of this. But um, as Councilor Clucci mentioned, a lot of times for me it comes down to the numbers. Um, so the main reason um, that I'm, I'm not for this this evening is because I feel that Scarborough already prevents, uh, already presents a very competitive economic environment for WEX to move here without an additional rebate. Um, so why is this? Well, there's one reason that wasn't in place back even in June of 2019 when the letter was written by SEDCO and the town manager, and that is um, our property tax rate, our mill rate, has gone down substantially based on many of us having uh, our property values increased. Um, so when you add our lower competitive mill rate to the 40% rebate um, that the property will also already receive based on the underlying CEA, that makes the tax rate very competitive um, to all the incentives that South Portland was offering based on everything that I've seen, which, you know, we don't know for sure what they offered, but we, we made a guess. Um, so um, that's one reason I think that we're competitive. Uh, already, based on everything the town has done. I feel like we've done enough. Um, and another thing is how the deal is structured. Um, 
the deal is currently structured to be built on a flat amount to WEX of 150000 When the deal was first presented um, to the council, um, and, and I, I looked back at the, the, work, uh, the workshop tonight when we talked about this, um, uh, <coughs> even Mr. Devine said the town will pay up to um, $150,000. But the way the legal agreement has now been structured is we're guaranteeing WEX 150,000, um, not capping at 150,000. So um, I would be far more comfortable with this deal if it said we're offering that percentage or 150,000, whichever is less. But right now, as um, Councillor Hayes mentioned, there, there's a lot of balls still in the air with this. The lease is not complete. Um, the, we don't we don't know what the valuation is going to be. We don't totally know what the size is going to be. Um, so uh, I really think that it would have been good to, um, to to put the cap in place, which we were going to do, but not the guarantee that we were going to pay um, this early in the deal. Um, the third reason that I'm not for them for this uh, deal right now um, is because. Uh, I feel like this was an ideal opportunity to make sure that the Downs, which is still very new um, and a very exciting opportunity for the town, um, but is shaping up very quickly, uh, did deliver on, on what um, the town has been promised that it will be delivered for. Um, I brought this up a number of times. Um, would we want to make some changes to the underlying agreement? Um, for example, uh, the Downs, who will be part owners of the WEX deal uh, of the WEX complex, will will still receive 40% rebate on the property, not less the 150, but the full 40%. So I think there were opportunities here, especially since the town um, is very embedded with the Downs. Um, we're going to be doing a downtown deal. Um, they've brought a, a lease deal for us to look at in terms of a community center slash sports complex. And this, uh, this deal is something the developers brought to us. They said they needed the town to close this deal. They said it a number of times. We can't close the deal without the town doing something for WEX. So to me, this was a great opportunity to make sure that the whole deal, not just one deal in a vacuum, worked for the town. And finally, um, I'm definitely all for commercial real estate coming as long as um, you know we're not giving away so much that it doesn't work. But if commercial real estate alone lowered taxes, then Portland would be the least expensive town to live in in the state, and it's the most expensive. Um, bringing WEX will not be a panacea to lowering taxes. Spending is what drives our mill rate, um, and we'll still need to be very careful with this. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Councilor Johnson? I'm sorry, I don't have a written statement to read. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I was, I've was i been on the fence. I've been on both sides of this issue. Listened to an awful lot of folks. So uh, there's a lot of folks that don't support this, and I understand it. I want to let you know that you've been heard. Definitely listened to you. Spoke with many of you. Would come in, into your homes, not trying to convince you, but to speak about the facts. Because we on the council have you know, access to an awful lot of information that's not out in the, in, into the public. And I, I've, this is the net plus for the town. There's no doubt about it in my mind. My responsibility as a town councilman is to make a responsible, informed decision that benefits the community as a whole. And for that reason, I'm going to support this. Thank you. Councilor Hamill? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to speak? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, uh, to make a short statement of support. Uh, I've been involved uh, in this uh, uh, quite extensively in the later stages. Uh, uh, and, you know, if you dial back uh, uh, to the beginning of uh, Chairman Johnson and my, you know, town council political careers, it started with a vote. Our first vote was on the down CEA, and we voted against it, along with Peter Hayes. Those are three people who voted against the down CEA. So the reason I say that is that um, we had questions then, but we made an agreement and we supported that agreement. And we're at another phase of that agreement, and that's at an inflection point, an opportunity for us to really make this thing take off in a favorable way. It's a strategic decision, building on the point that uh, Ken Johnson just made. 
you know, there have been a lot of questions about it, but this is one of the few things we think we can do strategically to try to shift the tax burden more toward commercial development away from residential taxpayers. And that, that is a, a, a concept that's hard to convey to the public, especially for people who got whacked with high tax increases, but that's a fact. And we need to give this an opportunity to see if it will work. If we turn away from this deal and trying to, to prove whether they're going to come or not is ridiculous, okay? Whether they come or not without a CEA, that's absurd. That's a phantom argument, and uh, it's a, that's a fool's bet. We, we have an opportunity, an unusual one, that comes along, you know, once in a blue moon. And if we pass on this, I think it would be one of the greatest mistakes we've ever made as a town. Um, and I, I'd be surprised what effect that might have. Um, I, I don't even want to want to think about the negative effect that might have in terms of us trying to be successful with uh, the commitment we've made to the to the downs and the CEA that we're we're a partner to. So that, you know, those are my feelings on it. I think we've gone to great lengths in this whole process in terms of laying out a, a lengthy public process, which we followed to a T. We haven't abbreviated it. We haven't um, <clears throat> tried to change it or extend it. We can't control where the parties are in terms of their discussions. This is a complicated uh, transaction. There's no question about that. But either we are going to try to see if this thing will work or not, and this is our first chance to do that, and that's why I'm in support of it. And I think that we've been prudent in our how we've thought through it. I think we have um, been modest in terms of the financial commitment we've made, and I think we've been wholly responsible um, from a financial standpoint as well as our obligations to represent the best interests of, of the entire town. So I, I am in support of this. Thank you. Uh, I'd start my comments with uh, agreeing with Councillor Gleistein. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think the overwhelming positive of this process is the fact that I think that the interactions throughout the community with our and ourselves, and particularly with the community and the taxpayers have been very positive. Um, so. Yes, not everybody in this case is going to get what they want, but I think we all are working towards something that we all agree upon, which is trying to open up the lines of communication and have good, honest discussion. So I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, I made the decision based off the downs. If you look at the downs, I know a couple things about the downs. The first thing I know is I don't want to live there. I don't want to live in the downs. It's not something that I would personally enjoy. It, but what I do know is that there's two to 3,000 housing units that could be in the Downs. Uh, and according to the CEA, they could have upwards of 750 single family homes in the Downs. I, I view WEX as a catalyst for the Downs to work. Uh, there's been mention about the school impact of WEX. I want all 750 single family homes to be occupied by WEX employees. That means that this is working. They are going to walk to work we can call it middle management way. It doesn't matter to me. But this is precisely, those 750 homes are going to be filled. We are in a prime location. We are one of the hot spots in the entire state. We have an opportunity here to influence the downs. And we're not going to have a whole lot of those opportunities. So there's the downs in the sense where, would I want to live there? Maybe not. No, you know, I like my place out in rural farming district in, in Scarborough. But it, I view this as a way of keeping the character of my neighborhood. If we can focus the growth where the growth is supposed to go, and I can still walk out my front door and have my chickens and not see a bunch of subdivisions, then to me, there's a, this is a catalyst for maintaining the character of the neighborhoods that we all love, by, but doing the, the growth that is necessary evil that I know a lot of us are wary of. So, you know, I think it's important. I'm not making this decision for WEX. I don't care about WEX. I'm not making this decision for Rocky, Rispera, or the Downs. I'm making this decision for the taxpayer. And yes, that sounds counterintuitive, but it's the only person I serve. After looking at all of this, I think that this is best for the entirety of the Scarborough taxpayer. So that's why I'm going to support. And so with that, all those in favor? And all those opposed? Okay. 
Moving on, order number 2022, first reading and refer to the planning board and pr the proposed amendments to chapter 405, the town of Scarborough zoning ordinance. And this comes to us from Jay, is Jay here? Or? Jay is not. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I, I would characterize this as really a housekeeping matter um, forever, and I, I wish I could be more specific, but it's been a very long time. The Registry of Deeds has required that subdivision plans and site plans uh, be placed on uh, so-called mylar paper. The uh, purpose of that is it's far more durable, uh, has better longevity than, than paper does. Uh, obviously, that uh, there, there's different ways of doing this in the age of uh, digital copies. And so state law changed uh, this past summer, and the registry no longer accepts mylar uh, copy. And so this is simply a, a, a change of our ordinances to make sure that um, the digital electronic file is what we want. It's better for us, it's more accessible for the public, and after all, it's what the registry requires now. Motion? So moved. Second? <coughs> Somebody? Anybody? Second. Okay, thank you. Discussion? None? All those in favor? Thank you. Order number 20023, first reading is scheduled a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 406, the Town of Scarborough Subdivision Ordinance. This is simply a companion piece uh, to that, um, intending to address the same issue. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? I just want to say I did ask a couple of questions about this and Tom answered those um, it's not going it, to well it's probably going to make it easier for people to get information that they want from plans not harder um, so this should be a positive for everyone yeah I will take the opportunity uh, this is an issue uh, Councillor Johnson I know is uh, keen on uh, we are working hard to find ways to better serve up all of the planning board related information and there are volumes I mean if you can see uh, the week that those plans go out they they can be a foot and a half tall for each planning board member so we're finding a way uh, to package those up digitally and make them accessible to the public should they want to dive into the detail uh, so I, I'm confident we'll get there and those plans are horrible to try to fold correctly once you've opened them up <laughs> Okay, all those in favor? <laughs> uh, order number 20024, first reading and schedule of public hearing on the proposed amendments for chapter 311, the town of Scarborough schedule of fees. And this is brought to us by the fire chief, which- I gave everyone the night off tonight. Yep, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, this piece really relates to order number, uh, your first order, uh, 2017. Uh, this is the uh, fee component associated with the new fire alarm uh, system. Uh, these matters, including the fees, have been talked about at uh, ordinance, mm -hmm. um, and I believe did receive unanimous you know, support from that yep. committee. So this just falls in line with, uh, again, the ordinance uh, replacing our old system uh, with a new fire alarm ordinance. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second, anybody? Second. Thank you. Discussion? I have one quick question. Does it come through the court current ordinance, or was this the previous ordinance committee? The this one. Yeah, the, you guys. Okay. Three, yes. three of us. Okay. And it came out three zero, I assume. Yeah. Okay. So, if people want to understand this, there is a lot of information about this that's gone back since as far back as two thousand and eighteen. Um, about the upgrade of the system and what it will mean for businesses in town, um, and what it will mean for homeowners. Um, Tom. Uh, kindly gave me a kind of a wrap up on that so if anybody watching has any questions on that um, feel free to bring those forward um, overall it sounds like it's going to be a, a good thing for residents um, and uh, it's uh, it's the wave of the future so you can't really uh, get away from digital all those in favor Okay, moving on, order number 20025, an act on the annual seasonal road posting for weight restrictions, if necessary, from February 20th to May 30th, 2020. Yes, we're having an optimistic, optimistic <laughs> outlook. Uh, the weather will be turning shortly. Uh, Mike Shaw and his crew wants to make sure that he has the authority to post roads. Uh, we're not quite there, but uh, with the 
with the weather we've been having, it can change in, in certainly a week's time. So uh, this will allow Public Works to uh, post roads, and there's a listing of those roads um, for your consideration. Uh, this is really an annual rite of passage, uh, a sure sign that springs around the corner. Have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Clucci? Uh, uh, Councilor Clucci, sorry. That, Clucci is fine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually quite common for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the order reads February 21st to May 5th. The memo um, from Mike Shaw reads February 21st to May 8th. And the chair just read February 21st to May 30th. So I just wanted to clarify. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a small detail, but no, which one are we shooting no, for? Oh, the order says so May 5th. clarify? Yes. The May 21st to May. Do you want to make a motion to amend that, Councilor Clucci? Yeah, I'll, I'll move to amend the order um, to read February 21st through May 8th. Is there a second on the amendment? Second. Discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment? Look how smooth that was, huh? Thank you for catching that. <laughs> now, with that being said, all those in favor of the motion as amended? With one editorial comment, I, I refrain from any <laughs> representations about spring in Maine, you know, how soon it's going to come. Well, that's why it's all the way out till May. <laughs> Mud season, I, I beg your pardon. Mud season, there you go. Uh, item number eight, I believe there are no action, there are no non-action items, excuse me. Uh, item number nine is standing and special committee report and liaison reports, and I will start with Councillor Hamill. Thank you. Uh, the Appointments and Negotiations Committee I uh, has a couple of uh, recommendations for appointments for the council for first notice, and that is to reappoint uh, on the long range planning committee, Robin Saunders and Dave Merrill uh, to uh, have additional terms as full voting members uh, due to expire in 2022. Thank you. Is that it? Councilor Johnson? I don't think I had any committee meetings. We did have a round table, community round table. I think the feedback on that was positive. It was good to see some new faces. Uh, thought it went well, and plan is to have more roundtables on different subjects as we move forward. And as somebody that wasn't there, the feedback was very positive good. from counselors and constituents. So, Councilor Katarina? Uh, yeah, ordinance will be meeting tomorrow at 4. We've got a pretty got a few things on there. Historical property updates, real land zones, smoke-free beaches, uh, senior property tax credit, and we will tee up um, how we're going to review the growth ordinance in town. So that will be tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Okay. Councilor Gleisting? Uh, we Sorry, we had a... Um uh, very robust rules and policies um, committee meeting uh, working on the action assigned to us by the town council to make recommendations um, regarding the charter review committee process and um, we we got to talk to the town attorney and discuss a number of issues it was a great meeting um, in my opinion and uh, there is a a um, challenge or a request by the uh, committee members that every town councilor uh, reread the charter hmm. often put it on your phone hmm. know it inside and out that's homework, that's homework. yep so that's homework <laughs> and um, we would ask actually members of the town also to really start getting up to speed on the town charter and the uh, staff I know is already thinking about it and they've they've been a great great help already Thank you. Councilor Hayes? Yeah, the Finance Committee meeting uh, met last week, and actually the, the only agenda items, we continue to work on the TIF CEA policy. There were just two of the members were new to the Finance Committee, so some of it was looking over what the prior work had been. There's some modifications. Our goal would try to bring something, work on it. Staff's coming back and trying to incorporate or make sense out of what we shared. Um, but try to get it back to the council by the end of March. Great. Council and, Clucci. And oh, then, sorry, I'm sorry. The other thing I'd add yeah. is that next week on 226 at 530 is, is a normal finance committee meeting. 
Councilor Clucci? Yeah, just a couple of uh, brief updates. I attended the Conservation Committee meeting uh, last week, and I uh, wanted to pass along that they are in search of a, a member. So if there's anybody interested in uh, uh, partaking in town government, there's an opportunity on the Conservation Committee, and they wanted me to also pass along that it's okay to test drive. So if you want to come to the meetings, they're open to the public, um, see if it's a good fit. I enjoyed the meeting. There's some really smart people in there, a lot of um, experience in, on the topic, you know, like almost 20 years, I think, some of them have, have been there. Um, and uh, it was very educational for me to, to sit in on that meeting. So um, anybody's interested, I recommend it. On the uh, Community Center Committee, they have delivered their report. Uh, we haven't done a big blast about it yet because we're anticipating another report from a consultant towards the end of the month, and uh, we, we wanted to kind of push them both out in tandem. But if anybody's interested, you're welcome to read the report. Um, it's out on the community center portion of the website. It's very detailed and thorough. If I had to give you my 30-second uh, synopsis, uh, the, the lease option that was provided by the Downs was high. The revenue potential for a community center was also high. So the, uh, there, were, there wasn't a definitive recommendation or conclusion, but they uh, presented a ton of supporting data for those two conclusions. Great. Thanks. And just to build off that, for if anybody is watching in the public, I, I would say we're looking at early March to mid-March where we would have a public workshop that both the report that Council Clucci referenced and the consultant's report would be presented to us. So timeline-wise, my guess is mid-March, possibly into April, but I, I, I think that this has been simmering enough that although we often say we're overwhelmed, I think this is one that we would be okay, just we need to move forward with it and get it to the public as quickly as we can. Uh, the only thing I would add is on last Wednesday, we had a four-hour BOE uh, town council joint meeting on growth. I would say two and a half hour hours of those were very productive. <laughs> there were tears, there were, there were <laughs> but no, it was, it was overall, I thought it was really important for both bodies to see, we look at things in terms of growth permits and building permits and people, and they look at things in terms of birth rates and students. So how do those two reconcile? We didn't solve all the world's problems in that meeting, but we at least got to be around a table and see each other, air some things out, and also get to have two, presentations about similar topics but two different angles so I think it was helpful for all of us when we do have more conversations and we are looking to schedule a second meeting I do have to reach out to uh, Leanne about that we originally had it next Wednesday but I believe finance or something got in the way so I will be in touch that meeting has not been set I need to talk to Leanne about it point of information yep would, would that meeting be about the school the proposed school yeah, so the current running, the current working title is a workshop to discuss large capital improvement um, priorities. So that's working. I haven't, we haven't set the date yet. There's discussion about bringing the library there and mm. having us all in one room. So when that is, it, I just need to set it with Leanne. We left that night with just leaving it that way. So. But no, I wouldn't say it's specific to them. This isn't necessarily their consolidated school roll out to us, so to speak. I think it's just an effort to keep trying to be around the table, so. Mr. Chair? Yep. Can we not have four hours? Sure. In the meeting? Five hours it is. Okay, oh. town manager's report. <laughs> 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 Gee, thanks. Uh, a few points of interest. Um, Councilor Hayes was uh, talking about the finance committee next week. I'm hopeful to uh, have them allow us to put a, a matter on that committee uh, for their consideration, this is the time of year where we go out to bond. April's our typical month. And so uh, that means we'd start the process uh, as soon as uh, first meeting in March with council. So if time allows and chair permits, uh, we'd like to have that discussion on uh, next Thursday, which would put us in a position of bringing the matter, the bond order before the council in March. Um, I also want to just report on uh, a matter that uh, has come to our attention. Uh, a number of residents have called us starting late Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. There was a, an article in the Bangor Daily News about a potential uh, ICE detention facility in Scarborough. Uh, that was the first uh, we heard of it. Uh, no one has come forward, asked us questions, uh, certainly, or sought any information or clarification from us. Um, it's my understanding this facility is located in the industrial park, and so in the industrial zone, 
uh, the first order of business is we look at what the zoning says and what's allowed in the in the zone. In that zone, uh, among other allowed uses, uh, there is a use called non-municipal government buildings or uses, which is extremely broad, mm -hmm. I will admit. Uh, and so, not knowing any particulars, at first glance, it appears that that facility would fit fairly squarely within that broad permitted use. Uh, but we still need to know more to, to make that definitive determination. Uh, I, I will note that um, a couple months ago, apparently, s the landlord had contacted someone in the code office and asked a very general question about the potential for erecting a fence around his building to accommodate the needs of a potential future uh, tenant. So that was our only knowledge, um, and that was months back. So no one's come forward. They will be required to get building permits and occupancy permits sh should they pursue this further. I guess the last point I'll just mention um, we don't know the, the final answer. I have asked the town attorney just to do some cursory research. I don't want to spend much money. Uh, but my hunch is that there may be some federal preemption that's involved in this as well. Um, ICE is underneath the Department of Homeland Security. And given the rise of that department in the aftermath of 9-11, I know there were very broad um, mm -hmm. authorities granted Homeland Security. So. I would not be surprised if local land use isn't even an issue here. Uh, so I will get that answer and provide that out. Uh, but again, we have nothing to react to at this point other than what we've read in the paper. Um, I don't know whether you have been receiving calls. I, I think Councillor Katarina has. Uh, I've probably had half a dozen at this point, and we'll continue to take them and uh, tell them what we know at this point. Uh, the last point, uh, just to make you aware, tomorrow evening we're doing a second follow-up neighborhood meeting. This is regarding the proposed rezoning for the public, existing public safety building lot. Mm. Uh, we will have present at the meeting the prospective buyers, uh, would be developers of the lot, and we think that will go a long way to helping the folks uh, meet the people, get a sense of what their concepts are. They're still very much in the development phase, but uh, we think that's going to be uh, really good to get parties together to start having that conversation. Uh, we're certainly there to help <coughs> talk about the zoning component too, but um, uh, it's my understanding at the first meeting, much of that discussion was focused on what's going to happen there, and, and we're not the ones to really respond to that. So I'm hopeful that will be a productive meeting tomorrow. With that, I'm available for questions. Any questions? For you? Thank you. Uh, Councillor comments, Councillor Cucci? Sure. I, I'd like to thank everybody who participated in the WEX uh, discussion over the past month. I think it's been, like, like Councillor Gleistein said, uh, productive. It's helpful to see different sides of the same issue from a different lens. So uh, I've appreciated that, and everybody's been respectful uh, in the process. So, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I have actually received a couple calls about the ICE detention facility, and it's something that uh, uh, I both understand, I think, the need for enforcement around illegal immigration, but also um, know firsthand about the workforce crisis that we have in Maine and a severe shortage of workers. So um, it's, it's an interest, uh, interesting topic for me and something that I, um, I think, Tom, I'd be interested in a report out uh, if we have any options. Uh, and, but also to understand it, I think, a little clearer. I think it, when you get into the social media world, everything's bipolar. And, <laughs> or extremes on both sides. And I think these guys are doing a job and uh, have an important job to do. Uh, but then there's the other side is we need people to work here and want to be able to come here. So I just want to understand the, the topic a little bit deeper uh, and hopefully convey that to the community as well. I just want to be clear, you're asking me to report on federal immigration. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. no, but you said you... All those in favor? <laughs> you, you said you'd ask the town attorney for uh, oh. some, some feedback and... I just don't want that to get lost. Could be your last day on yeah. the job right there. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor, is, is that a, yeah. yeah, Councillor. No, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Councillor Gleistein. Okay. Councillor Caterina. Um, no, just, you know, um, the ICE facility, I, I heard about it from someone calling me on the phone who directed me to the Bangor Daily News article. Um, so I do know there are, there's quite a bit of concern out there with a certain segment of the, uh, of the population. But again, as I said on my Facebook posting, um, 
it's not a municipal, all we can do is control what our ordinances say and don't say and what people want to do with their buildings. They can do as long as they aren't breaking ordinances or zoning or whatnot. Um, but if you have concerns about the fact that uh, ICE is planning on some type of facility, I suggest you reach out to federal officials, i.e., you know, Representative Pingree, um, and Senators King and Collins uh, for this area, they're the appropriate people to talk to because as municipal official, officials, I can't even talk, um, it's, you know, all we can do is zoning ordinance, uh, certificates of occupancy, whatever. So, thank you. Councilor Johnson? Brief, because I know we're all tired, but back to Councilor Hayes' point about possibly, I, I think it's be very valuable if we explored the possibility of maybe getting somebody on retainer to help us deal with uh, what we know is coming with uh, future CEAs combined with the ECA TIF policy that's coming through the, uh, the Finance Committee. I think it would just help us. I think everybody here is pretty much on, you know, we're intelligent folks, but I'm not, I'm not a finance guru, and I don't know all the behind-the-scenes type things. and. Uh, we want to feel like we're being treated fairly. I'm not saying we're not, but I want to f get that comfort level with, with maybe a, a third party. I don't know how we do it. Hopefully it wouldn't cost too much money or it would get curtailed, but, we, you know, we, we definitely should explore it. Councilor Hamill? Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to make a comment on the, the WEX uh, issue. And this is really the first big decision that uh, has come before the new council. And I think because of that, that, uh, you know, put a, a lot of people in, you know, in tough positions to make decisions, you know, without a lot of uh, background and perspective. And uh, so, but I, I, I also want to just kind of credit uh, my fellow counselors, uh, you know, for being open and respectful and for the most part civil, you know, kind of a few moments of incivility on my part. But I think that we, we made, um, we took some risks as a council in terms of how we approached this, not only in terms of the length of the process, but how transparent we would be, reading stuff into the record, you know, going, you know, really sharing pretty, pretty much everything we knew with, with the entire public and with one another. So I think that's hard to do. And um, uh, however, I think that's going to prepare us uh, if we follow that same approach with other issues that are coming that are going to be bigger bigger and just as tough, if not tougher, than the WEX issue. And everyone has their, you know, the, the one they can point to that, uh, that, that that may be. We're facing a tough uh, budget cycle. We have a lot of big decisions in front of us. But I think having get, gotten through, hopefully, this, this one issue, issue uh, and hopefully it will end up closing and being successful, but I, hopefully that will embolden us in terms of our ability to deal with similar issues and convey to the public that we are going to continue to be thoughtful and deliberate and fair and responsible and, and open to all sides. So, um. Okay. Uh, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So. All those in favor?